Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today it is time for the match preview for Dundee United tomorrow night. A game in which of course Celtic can officially crown themselves champions of Scotland. The job is basically done. Effectively we are the champions of Scotland but if we want to say it officially, because I know some people don't like to say it's over till it's over, then it might be tomorrow night at Tanadice if we even take a point. <laughs> Before we go any further with the video, please make sure to go down below and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We are just over 100 subs away from 34,000, so let's get to that marker before the end of the season on that road to 40k. It would be much appreciated. Also, hit the like button while you're done down there. And also, thank you for all the kind words yesterday uh, on the video that I made, the video explaining the move and such to this new area and all that business and basically going full time on YouTube. So thank you for that. If you haven't watched it, I'll put the link in the comments or sorry the description below and you can check that out but let's not waste any more time let's talk about Selic that's what we're all here for so then as I touched on in the intro to this video it is a chance tomorrow night for Celtic to be officially crowned champions in the Scottish Premiership to end off what has been a fantastic season well not quite end off yet we've got one more stop at the weekend but to, to kind of put the icing on the cake the cherry on top and have that official sort of champion's name. You know, we have that opportunity tomorrow night, of course, away from home at Tanadice. Gives me throwbacks, gives me gives me memories back to 2008 when we won it in Tanadice. Um, but it would be fantastic. It would be amazing for the away support who are travelling up there um, to go up and see the job being done. Um, and it'd be just nice to have it all done and dusted. It's a sort of low-risk game, which is nice. You know, even if we were to lose tomorrow night, touch wood, that doesn't happen. We don't want to lose football games. But even if that was to happen, you know, we're still basically going to be champions come the end of the season. But it would be nice to, to get the job done, carry the atmosphere into that game against Motherwell on Saturday. Um, and ultimately, it's just nice to have that, that tag, isn't it? To actually say, you are the champions. We are the champions. In fact, we can now say that once more after losing the league title last season. It's everywhere we deserve to be after what has been a fantastic season. You know, we've been fantastic home and away. As the chant goes, everywhere we go, we have been watching um, Celtic put on a show, if you like. It has been tremendous all season. And to get one last away win, one last win on the road would be very, very nice. I think that we've exceeded all expectations. You think back to the early stages of the season and we lost to Hearts at Tyne Castle. We lost to Livingston at the Tony Macaroni. We lost to Rangers at Ibrooks. We didn't get off to the best start away from home, but from that loss at Livingston onwards, it's been all uphill and we deserve to be where we are. And It would be nice to just end that away road trip journey <laughs> i can't find my words it'd be nice to end that with yet another win so in terms of how we approach the game itself we're at that point of the season now where we know how we approach these games it's it's no longer a surprise and it's no longer a surprise in what to expect from the opposition we've played dundee united four times now this will be the fifth time this season we played them um, we've played them in the cup obviously and we've played them three times in the Premiership already. So we know what to expect and we know what to expect from Celtic. Ange Postacoglu has never sacrificed his style, his philosophy against any opposition, whether it be European football or whether it be Dundee at the bottom of the table. We know exactly what to expect from Celtic heading into these games and sometimes, you know, it comes off better than others and some games it's not as effective as what we'd like it to be. But the, the vast majority of football games this season, Celtic have went into the game and we've known what to expect and we've got the football that we love and we've grown to love over the course of this season. Um, I think that what we've played against Hearts at the weekend is basically what we're going to see against Dundee United uh, tomorrow night. I think we're going to see a very similar style. I think we're going to see us try and play the same way as we did. As I said, no surprises at this point. I think the only thing that I could ask for um, that's different from the Hearts game at the weekend is that we start the game a little bit better. We were incredibly poor in the first five, ten minutes of that Hearts game. I mean, maybe not incredibly poor. I don't want to be too harsh on the team. We were incredibly poor. But we were poor in the opening five, ten minutes of the game. We looked as though we were struggling to get to grips with just the ball in general. We couldn't really string a pass together. We looked very nervous. So it's time to eliminate that side of our game. Dundee United are certainly a side who 
can control a game a bit better, I think, than Hearts uh, if they get an early goal. I think we've seen how stubborn Dundee United can be. They have one of the best defensive records in the league, I think, outside the top three. I think they're only bettered by Hibs this season in terms of goals conceded. So they can make the game difficult if they were to get an early goal. And I think that for us, it's about starting the game stronger, but then just growing into the game the same way we did on Saturday there. You know, we, we might not have started great, but you've seen each and every player grow into the game a bit better. So start better and, and grow into it the way we did on Saturday. And I think you've got this game pretty much controlled from the get-go. Of course, it's a tough game. And as I've said, a stubborn side, Dundee United. But I would love us to end the season now with as many goals as possible. Let's just put on a show, a feast of football, if you like, and, and score as many as we possibly can. It's that fun stage of the season now where, well, you hope it's fun, where you can try and just have a little bit of a, a a buzz with it and try and just play your best football. There's no risks there, as I said. We are effectively champions. So I would like us to go out in style. If we could go to Tannadice and get a few tomorrow. Look, we've done it on a couple of occasions this season, back before the winter break. And then, of course, in the cup game, both of those games, I think we got three goals in them. Let's get more than that. Let's aim for higher than three goals this time at Tannadice. That would be a nice way to, to end the away stretch of the season. Of the season. And as I said, just like I did with Celtic, you, you know what to expect from Dundee United. We are going to come on to the opposition in a moment, but there's not really any surprises at this point with Dundee United and Tam Court's side. They've done very well this season, don't get me wrong, to get up into the top half of the table. They're fighting for a chance of European qualifiers come the start of next season. So, you know, they're a side who are hungry, they're a side who offer uh, problematic situations at times. But it's a side we've came up against that many times and we've won against that many times. So I'm not entirely sure what surprises to expect in the game, but let's have a little bit of a deeper dive into the opposition. So let's start with their post-split form. Since the split, they've of course played three games, the same as everyone else. They've lost two and won one. The game that they won was in the middle of the two losses against Motherwell. And they lost to Hearts and Rangers outside of that game is that they were probably anticipating to lose anyway um well you know if, you're, if you've got a winning attitude you don't anticipate to lose games but i think that those two games in celtic are the ones that i think you know if you were to put an outside chance um it would be certainly those games i think the ones they expect to win or they hope to win are certainly ross county motherwell and they managed to get the win against motherwell but this is the thing about dundee united they're not going to be pushovers absolutely not just as i said with hearts they will be right up for this they will be certainly in this game to try and get something. They're in a really good position where they can, as I mentioned earlier in the video, finish in a spot that gives them European qualifier spots next season. They could potentially be fighting for European football. That's massive for Dundee United. It's massive for this league. Um, of course, I don't really care. I care about Celtic. And if Celtic get to Europe, that's my main priority. But um, if Dundee United can get into European football, it's huge for them. And it's just, this league now has five spots in this league where we can get European football. First to fifth, all have an opportunity there. So that place, that fifth place in the, in the league, that fourth and fifth is still up for grabs. Dundee United currently sitting fourth on the table. They don't want to let that slip. Um, and it will go to squeaky bum time uh, with Ross County in the end of the last game of the season. So they want to try and get something from this game. I guarantee that right now. They want to try and increase their chances. They want to try and give themselves a maximum opportunity of, of reaching European football next season. They're all within three points of each other. You know, Celtic and Rangers and Hearts are, of course, they've secured their places in European football. That doesn't matter. But Dundee United, Motherwell and Ross County, they're all within three points of one another. It can finish any way, really, um, for those three sides. So Dundee United will certainly be up for this. There won't be any pushing over in this game. Uh, and that'll make it tough for us, I think. We've seen firsthand how difficult Dundee United can be to beat. And surprisingly, it's been at Celtic Park. The games at Tannadice, we've been great in. I remember the, the first game at Tannadice this season. At the time, I thought it was one of our best performances of the season. And then the Scottish Cup game, we weren't spectacular in that. I, I thought that we were probably, you know, the 3-0 flattered us a little bit. But, you know, the, the Tannadice games were good. It's the games at Celtic Park that have shown that they can be a tough side to beat. The first one, a one all draw. Um, that was one of the games early on in the season where we were thinking, Christ, can we win a league title? Um, and then the other game, right before the derby um, in, in January time, 29th of January, it was a 1-0 win for Celtic that came through that 90th minute goal, if you remember rightly. Um, so honestly, they are a tough side to beat and we've seen that firsthand in front of our very eyes. And with that opportunity of, of European football being there for Dundee United, 
it's certainly going to make this a tough one. Um, if we don't get the right start in the game, if we start like we did against Hearts, that's what I'm saying, it could be a really tough day, a tough night for Celtic. You'll remember rightly that the last game, as I mentioned, was that Scottish Cup game. Jakimakis got two that night. He was in the right place at the right time. They were two of the scrappiest looking goals you'll ever see, but the striker's goals. He's in the right area, he's in the right time, um, and, and he's put it in the back of the net. He's done his job. doesn't matter how they go in the back of the net. If they go in the back of the net, that's what matters. So that begs the question, is Dundee United the sort of opposition that suits Giacomacchus more than Kyogo? We're bringing up that same debate that we've been having a lot over the last month or so. Um, who suits certain games better? Giacomacchus certainly showed against Dundee United that he can score. Um, but is Kyogo going to bring us that, that opportunity of, of beating a firm defensive line off the run? Who knows? We'll talk about it in my starting 11 prediction. So, team news then. We'll start with Dundee United um, because we basically know the Celtic team news anyway. Dundee United will be missing five players as far as I'm aware. Five players who are out till the end of the season. Mark McNulty, Maxime Biamu, uh, Ian Harks, Peter Pollitt and Callum Butcher are all ruled out of this game as far as I'm aware. Callum Butcher being one of those ones you're glad to see out of the game. Um, a very annoying player to play against, to say the least. But they have got players there who, given opportunities, can cause problems. Peter Pollitt has been around for a long time. Ian Harks, Mark McNulty. They're all guys that's names you expect to see on these team sheets every now and then. And they can probably pop up with something. But still a decent side Dundee United have, despite the injuries, despite the, the players who will miss this game. Um, but Celtic are in a far better position and, and we should be focusing fully on ourselves and making sure we get the right result. So Celtic team news then, there's no news on Juranovic as of recording. I don't know if we'll hear anything today from Ange Postacoglu in regards to his situation. However, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any positive update on Juranovic and as I said in the Hearts preview, and even after the Hearts game, I, I do think that his season is over. Not in a bad way. I don't think that like he, he's, he's done in. I just don't think there'll be a point in bringing him back into the squad now when we could just be resting him now for a, another big season next year. You know, let's not risk anything. Let him go and enjoy his summer. There isn't really a need to get him back in this team when we are the champions. Just let Ralston see it out from here till the, the final whistle on Saturday. So I'd imagine that Juranovic is probably done for the season. Um, for my starting 11 prediction then, let's run through my team. I'm going to go with Joe Hart in goals with a back four of Ralston, Carter Vickers, Starfield and Taylor. A midfield three of Callum McGregor, Matt O'Reilly and David Turnbull. And for my front three, yes, I'm dropping Kyogo Furuhashi and I'm bringing in Giacomacchus who will be joined by the regular wingers at this point of Jota and Dyson Maeda. Um, that's my 11 on screen there that I'm going to go with for this game. Uh, and I'm going to go through the kind of big calls as to why and who I'm, I'm choosing here. The, I think the first big call evidently is uh, Georges Yakimakis over Kyogo Furuhashi. Kyogo bagged his 18th goal of the season against Hearts. He's back and he's looking sharp. Um, but as I said, I just think that Dundee United is a kind of team that will set up in a way that we need those kind of first time finishes. We need headers. We need, um, you know, tap ins. And I think Yakimakis is better suited to that than Furuhashi. Tell you what though. Furuhashi, of course, scored a header against Hearts. Furuhashi scored some amount of headers this season for a guy his size. It's a, a, unbelievable, but I'm going to start Giacomacchus in this game, and I think Kyogo will probably come back into the starting lineup for the game against Motherwell. But, you know, once again, I'll see it, as I've said time and time again, I honestly do not care who starts between the two. They're both phenomenal players. I think there's fine margins between the two as to who's better. Um, I'm obviously more of a Giacomacchus fan myself, but I love Kyogo Furuhashi with all my heart, so... I don't really mind, but I'm going to go with that. And the other kind of big call is the midfield three. I've decided to stick with the same three that started against Hearts. I've went Turnbull, O'Reilly and McGregor. I think that Turnbull getting minutes in his legs is valuable for him just now, just to see where he is as a player. I don't think Hitati is going to be put back into the starting lineup from now till the end of the season either. And then McGregor and O'Reilly kind of picks itself. Of course, we've got Rogic in there, but O'Reilly played really well at the weekend. Got a goal, of course. So I'm going to go for that as my as my midfield three. And of course, the big news that broke earlier this week is that Nir Beaton may be leaving the club at the end of the season upon contract expiry. News that I didn't necessarily expect. So it begs the question, how much will he be involved between now and the end of the season? Of course, a very fine servant to Celtic. 
yes, controversial player um, and probably done as much bad as he's done good in his Celtic career. But uh, someone who's been here a very long time, about a decade now that he's been at Celtic. So he'll probably be involved to some extent in the last couple of games, but I don't see him starting. Um, not in this game anyway. Uh, and we'll wait to find out more news as to whether or not he'll be a Celtic player next season. And finally, in this very long match preview, I'm going to go for a score prediction of Celtic to win 2-0 at Tannadice. That's my prediction. Um, and yeah, that about does a very long preview today. You can tell this is full time now. I'm not rushing. I'm, I'm, I'm going my way through the video. I've got, a, I've got a wee kind of running order on my screen and everything. Wow. Um, but that does it. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, what you agree with, what you disagree with, your predictions uh, in regards to the team and the score for tomorrow night. But for me today, that'll do it. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.